We had a company on um, last week called Ideanomics. It's uh, listed on yeah. NYSE, but they have got huge access into China. Their business is in China, and they're talking about the EV thematic in China, and it kind of gives a real sense of what's going on there. We're talking about uh, retrofitting existing trucks, lorries, large, you know, carrying vehicles, buses, you name it, and they're retrofitting those. It's going from, yeah. you know, um, uh, moving it, moving them all to battery-driven uh, vehicles. Some of them being converted into autonomous vehicles. It's kind of exciting to see, but also 100,000 electric vehicle charging points across China, right? I yeah. mean, it's just yeah. insane. And they're going to be doing this by 2022, folks. So yeah. and when the Chinese say we're going to do it, it gets done. You know? Yes. So yeah. There, yeah. Yeah. there's some benefits yeah. living in, in, in a sort of state-controlled in environment. Authoritarian yeah, regime uh, where the punishment can be pretty severe for not uh, achieving a goal. No, that's the part. And I think the other really key piece of this, I mean, we all focus on cars and Teslas, but, you know, when you look at the entire vehicle market, you know, um, you know, the city of Shenzhen had electric, all, an all electric bus fleet, you know, a year or two years ago. So, um, you know, that whole shift in, in the whole range of vehicle fleets. And again, you know, the, the battery that's going to be in a bus is, is much, much larger than it is for a car. Now, given the distance that a lot of buses travel, you're going to see a lot of lithium iron phosphate be used in those applications because they, do, they don't need to drive 500 miles. You know, they're doing a relatively short loop for a certain number of hours a day. Um, you know, so, so, you know, that's not going to translate directly into all nickel demand. But again, when you get to, you know, the, the Tesla, you know, semi truck, and you're going to see semi trucks elsewhere in the world end up shifting to electric, you know, those are going to be great big, uh, you know, long range, lots of nickel batteries um, that are coming down the pipe. So, you know, again, that's where, um, you know, really, you know, automobiles are really just the tip of the iceberg, you know, and you've got, you know, buses, trucks, and a whole bunch of other vehicle fleets underneath it um, that are, you know, coming to the front. The other part is uh, California, there's a news you know, story that uh, there was power outages, you know, and they're talking about having, you know, more battery storage uh, in their grids to be able to balance the loads because of solar and wind don't always the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow when you want it to. And, and so um, they had to do that in South Australia. Tesla put a big you know, a bat, set of battery packs in there. You're seeing that happen in now and talking about it more in California. And again, you'll see as renewables become a bigger share of the grid, having, having these kind of batteries to help balance out some of those loads is going to become more important. Again, not always nickel. You know, there's other there's other technologies that are very suitable for you know standalone storage, but you know nickel will be a part of that. And again, it's just one more you know battery application that's that's going to need a lot of more nickel in the future. That's phenomenal. Yeah, we, we were talking to someone else last week with regards to the the black ads in in California last week, and obviously I think it was in the context of nuclear because you know there's one of the nuclear plants or reactors um, G2 basically. I think I think. I think it's in two years' time or three years' time. It's basically to be shut down unless they apply for an extension. But it doesn't look like they're, they're likely to. Be, and, that, and that's the point here: is that there's lots. And when you when I was talking to this dynamics group um, about the the number of vehicles, the charging points, etc., the, the big topic was around um, different types of energy provision solutions. Yeah. Right. I mean, and, and that yeah. and once you start to try to understand the way that the Chinese are approaching. Uh, this, it, you know, from from nuclear, from you know hydro, and uh, you know all the conventional forms of energy energy production, including that that well, trying to phase out coal. Um, you certainly appreciate the additional amount of energy they believe is going to be required to charge their battery driven fleets of cars, lorries, trucks, buses, and the rest. Let alone homes for domestic use. Yeah. Um, it's it's phenomenal, but it, it, what it does is gives you some clues as to the amount of uh, nickel and copper and lithium and graphite. And when, when, and I do appreciate your point. There are going to be different yeah. batteries for different solutions, and there's going to be different designs um, out there. But it's all of the above, not some of the above. That's going to be required. Right. And that's, that, that, that's, again, sort of ties back to the earlier comment in terms of BHP's view on future facing metals. You know, they're not, you know, they're not looking at this as a two year trade in nickel and copper and potash. You know, they're, you know, the, they think in multi decades, 
you know, and so, you know, this is a theme that they think isn't, you know, when they say publicly like this, that this is where their commodity focus is going to be, this will be where their commodity focus is not just for the next year or so, but, you know, in their mind, if they've done it right, this is something that they'll be focused on for the next 10 to 20 years.